I'm in Windows Server 2022, and I'm going to show you what I hope to be a very useful tutorial on DNS. If I am in Server Manager, as you see here, and I go to Tools, and I choose DNS, then we can go ahead and open this up. This is a domain controller, and a domain controller automatically has DNS added when you promote a server to be a domain controller. And you can see I've got two different servers in my DNS server list. If I'd like to add any additional DNS servers, all I have to do is right click on DNS and choose connect to DNS server, and I can choose the name of the computer here. Now I only have the two, so I'm just gonna go with the two that you see. I'm going to click on the forward lookup zones. We see we have forward, reverse, trust points, and conditional forwarders. So I'm going to choose the forward lookup zone. And there's automatically two zones, which is what we call these on the left-hand side. There's two zones that are created when you make a server a domain controller. Now, if this is a DNS server that's not a domain controller, which is certainly possible, then you won't see those domain and forest zones. So these two zones are really what makes Active Directory work as far as DNS goes. You cannot make Active Directory work without DNS, which is why it automatically installs and configures it for you. Now you can certainly add additional zones and make other changes, things that I'm going to do in this playlist. But I just want to show you that we have this MSDCS followed by the name of the zone, in this case, lil.int. And underneath that, we have just plain old lil.int along with additional records. Don't make any changes at all to the underscore MSDCS zone. There's no reason to do it. It's needed for the forest and the domain to replicate to other domain controllers. Now, if I go to the domain itself, then I can go ahead and make changes. So you can see there are some A records in here. There's MX for email. There's IPv6, text records, C names, all different kinds of things that I'm going to cover in this playlist. I want to double click on the most common type of record, which is the A record, also known as the host record. So you might see it called one or the other, but they mean exactly the same thing. They are a forward lookup zone record when they're in the forward lookup zone. So you can see my host is the name, which is li-client01. And you can see the fully qualified domain name adds in the rest of the domain. That's my Active Directory domain name. And then it has a record of .103. So basically what that means is if I want to connect to this client, I don't need to memorize the IP address. All I got to do is know the name, the host name of the client. Now, if I'd like to update this client with what's called a reverse record, which is an IP address to name rather than a name to IP address, then I would check this box here. Now, it's not going to work unless I create that zone first. So I'm going to uncheck that and just click Cancel. So here are all the different records, and you're going to see different records inside each of these folders. So for instance, if I go to default first site name, TCP, we can see SRV records. See those? That's service location records. And then we see on the left-hand side, LDAP, Kerberos, and GC for global catalog. The global catalog is a record that points to which server is carrying a copy of Active Directory. If it's not a domain controller, then you won't see this. If it is, then you will, and you should. If it doesn't show it here, then you might need to add it. Then it shows Kerberos. Now, the reason that there's two of these records is because there's two servers. There's DC01 as well as DC2. Kerberos is what's used for authentication. When you log in with your username and your password into Active Directory, it has to have a Kerberos record to say where the servers are that will authenticate you and allow you onto the domain. If there's no Kerberos records, then you cannot log in. Then there's LDAP. LDAP does a name lookup. So if you are going to look up a name to see if it exists, so you can log in as that person, then you have to have the LDAP. And that stands for Lightweight Directory Application Protocol, which is a really long way of saying it's just a way of looking up names. If any of these records are missing, they do need to be replaced. And that's one of the things that I do to troubleshoot Active Directory sometimes is I will go in with a DNS server that is working properly, and I'll just compare the records between the two. And if I notice anything missing, then I'll go ahead and replace it. Or if it's incorrect, then I'll go ahead and fix it.
Typically, you don't need to make any changes to the sites, the TCP, the DNS zones, etc. Most of the time, they're just fine the way they are. And all you'll need to do is to add or edit these A records or the MX records and things, all these different things you're going to see in this playlist. Next, we have the reverse lookup zone. Now, the reverse lookup zone will take us from the IP address to the name rather than the name to the IP address. Having reverse and forward lookup zones makes it easier not only for you to look up IP addresses to names and names to IPs, but also certain applications that need that type of information. So if I right click and choose to create a new zone, then we see the new zone wizard appears. Even though the forward lookup zones are created by default, the reverse ones are not. So you'll need to manually create that. Now we can see the different zone types, primary, secondary, stub, and also store an active directory. If we wanted to replicate with the other domain controllers, then make sure you leave this box checked. And in this case, I do. I want to make sure that all my domain controllers have a reverse zone created and replicate that data from one to the other. I'm going to click Next, and I'm going to choose the defaults here. This is to all servers running in the domain, and this is going to be an IPv4, although you can create a 6 if you'd like. Now we need to put in the network ID. What do we put for the network ID? Well, I'm going to go to a command prompt, and I'll type in ipconfig. ipconfig tells me that this is a 192.168.21 network because the subnet mask shows me that it is. So I only use the first three octets. So I'm going to go into here and put in 192.168.21. I don't need to put in the last octet because that's for the host. That is not for the network portion of the IP address. I'll click Next. I'm going to choose the defaults here, only secure dynamic updates, and click Finish. Now you'll notice when I create this reverse lookup zone, it automatically creates a start of authority record and a name server record. And the name server record just points to where the domain name server is, which is this, this particular server. And the start of authority means that I can go ahead and make changes to this zone, or this particular server can uh, actually go ahead and make changes as long as it's on this particular server. If I try to do this from any other server, such as a secondary zone or what's called a stub zone that you saw in that wizard that popped up, you'll only have read-only access and not the ability to make changes because you don't have that start of authority record in there. If you decide to sign your zone, that adds additional security. And that will be a place where you would see a trust point. It can add in the cryptographic key for a signed zone. Now, I'm not going to cover that in this video, but I will have a video where I will show you how to sign a zone and create a trust point. But it's a way basically for clients to know for sure that they're getting their information from the correct place and not from a hacker. Conditional forwarders, those are a way that we can go ahead and redirect access to other zones that might be internal to our domain or internal in our location, but maybe in another domain or forest. So for instance, if I have the contoso.com domain inside my location, then I don't want to go out to the internet and come back in again to reach it. I want to reach it inside my organization rather than outside and back in. And that's mainly because most firewalls no longer allow you to go outside and come back in for security reasons. So if I want to reach the contoso.com domain, I can create a conditional forwarder, which I'll show you in more detail in an upcoming video. And that way I can reach it inside my domain rather than trying to have it go outside the domain. If I expand my other domain controller, then I should see the exact same records, and I do. So I'll click on the internal domain, and you can see the records there. If I click here, we see the exact records. So if I create a record in one domain, it will automatically replicate to the other because it's an Active Directory domain zone that automatically replicates. I have lots to teach you in this playlist about DNS, and that's because DNS is very important to Active Directory, whether you're using it on-premises or in the cloud.